From scoring a hat trick of own goals to tripping on a carpet, here are 15 of the most embarrassing moments on ice of all time. For the goalies that watch this video, we're gonna start off with a hat trick of own goals by the New Jersey Devils. I'm sorry, goalies, this is gonna hurt a little bit to watch. The New Jersey Devils did the impossible back in 2018 because they decided they wanted to make Schneider suffer and I frankly don't think we're ever gonna see this happen again. Okay, I hope at least, not for the sake of the goalie's mental state, but because this is a mind killer, the Ducks were gifted the first own goal in the first period when the puck bounced off a skate and into an empty net. PSA to all the players out there, just let the goalie stop the puck! I mean, it's only his job, right? Like, maybe you should respect him and allow him to try to do that! But Lovejoy didn't like his goaltender, he didn't trust his goaltender, he tried to do it all himself, and that's when the puck was lobbed toward the net, and he would rather handle the shot himself, being Mr. Superman over here with Love, but he found out quickly that lovers cannot be heroes, and the goal went in off of his own skate. I don't think that the goaltender had any joy left in him after that. That was just the first one. The next one was just an unlucky attempt at getting the puck over the net, but luckily the Devils were able to tie up the game. Only to lose in overtime. I wonder what was said in the locker room after the game. If they didn't get the Hattie of own goals, they probably would have won the game. Third own goal by the Devils in this game. You can't make this stuff up. But some players are just not the fighting type, and when they do engage in a fight, they may just hang on to the other player for dear life, or just try to take him down. Alex Salmon only fought one time in the NHL, and we're lucky he never did after. You just watched this fight he had with Mark Stahl. But before we get to the fight, we should point out that Stahl had only two previous NHL fights before facing off with Salmon. The first fight was more of a hugging match with the player spinning continuously in a circle before the linesman breaks it up. The second fight was Stahl hugging the opponent before falling to the ice. So, I don't know if we can call this a fight either because of what you're about to witness. The most exciting thing about this so-called fight was Stahl jerseying Salmon. Stahl then fell to the ice and Salmon does something I've never witnessed an NHL player do. I don't even know how to explain it. He looks like a seal slapping with his flippers. Like, what even is that? This is going to go down as one of the worst fights in the NHL. That is not a National Hockey League fighter. I'm going to slap you silly, kid. <laughs> Now we've watched many players slamming their sticks against the post in anger after a goal was scored and nothing happens. But Ballard injured his own goaltender in the process. Kovalchuk was gifted with a partial breakaway with Ballard right behind him trying to break up the play. Kovalchuk takes a shot and the goalie stops it with the puck to the right of the pad. Kovalchuk then picked up the loose rebound and put it right into the beehive. Ballard was so upset about the goal and he went to hit the post. I mean, it was his fault after all. But the only downside is that the stick hit Vakan on this side of the head. Vakan immediately took off his helmet and grabbed his ear. You can see a little bit of blood when the camera zoomed in. He was attended to by medical staff immediately as they prepared the stretcher. But thanks to the stick swing, he received 10 stitches and a crazy story to tell his grandkids. Here it is, Ballard out of frustration, going to hit the goalpost and catches Vokun. Coming in at number 4, we have an injury prone player injuring himself while celebrating. Penguins fans will know exactly who we're talking about before we even say his name. Bennett was supposed to be another star player for the Penguins, but the poor guy couldn't stay healthy. After scoring a goal against the Canadians, he skated towards the boards with his arms up. The next thing the fans knew was he would be out 5 games with an upper body injury. Thankfully, he was a pretty good sport about it and even said that he'll learn to celebrate less. Down the, wing, into the, Canadian zone. Shooting, he the next guy got injured doing something he's done thousands of times throughout his career. Havlat was getting ready to hop over the boards for a shift and managed to injure himself in the process. He had to crawl towards the bench door and head down the tunnel. Havlat's skate got caught on the boards and he ended up partially tearing a tendon in his hamstring. He was lucky that it was only a partial tear and he only had to miss 8 weeks instead of the remainder of the season. Still sucky though, he's going to be using the door from now on. 
both benches. You can see Havlat was just coming on and somehow injured himself hopping over the boards. What do you get when you put a carpet on the ice and Sarah Pollen drop in the ceremonial puck? Well, if you guessed the Sarah Pollen curse, you would be correct. Manny Legas will probably go down in history to be the only NHL goalie to be injured from a carpet that lay there for people to walk on due to the ceremonial puck drop. And although he did start that game, he had to be replaced shortly after the first period. For the opening ceremony, many legacy, oh dear, he slips on the carpet. Number six will showcase that some hockey players should stick to hockey, not go into acting. Mike Ribeiro did some questionable theatrics at center ice when he started flailing his feet around a collision with the opponent. The next thing we see is him on the bench laughing at the Bruins bench as if nothing had happened. He claimed that it wasn't even him faking an injury and rather it was just a stinger in his upper body. But let us know if you think he was faking it. And is writhing in pain, he'd be okay actually as a smile for the Bruins bench. Time to show some respect to Big Man Shara who gave us this amazing clip. You gotta be either crazy or really wanna die if you're gonna take on the Chara. Brian McCabe made a living in the penalty box and it was practically his second home. He certainly had his fair share of fights, however, he was severely outmatched this time around. Cause he was engaged in a net front battle with who other than Shara. And he was so enraged that he decided to make the dumbest move of his career and take a swipe at Shara after the whistle. Chara certainly made him pay by ragdolling him into the amusement of his teammates and the fans. Now listen. The wrestling training in the summer. Well, Belfort gets the original penalty for slashing Char. Being manhandled like that is pretty embarrassing, but not as embarrassing as this next clip. Fans like fights, and fights fire up the players. What effect does it have on the game when gloves are dropped but no punches are thrown? That's right, no punches are thrown and just two players staring at each other going in a circle round the rosy until the linesmen step in to break up the non-existent fight. What a snooze fest and what even is the point of dropping the gloves if you're not going to do anything? So far this has been a lot of the evil eye and not much else. Listen up. We're only going to include one missed empty net, and no, it will not be Stefan's epic miss because that is overused. Instead, put your hands together for Craig Smith. I think we can chalk it up to him, just being a good guy because how else could it be explained that he missed a wide open net? He was so close to the net, and yet he sent it sailing above the net. You can keep chewing on that mouth guard out of embarrassment. I'm not even sure how that's possible, but good on him for making the teammates laugh and giving the coach good reason to bench him for the next year and a half. Just look at him as he sits down with a thousand yard stare on the bench. An empty net is found on first, fed in front, and missed. He didn't score. We know that this list just wouldn't be complete if we didn't include Mike Smith at some point. Now, Smith is probably the first and only goalie to score on his own net by putting the puck in the net with his breezers. I said what I said, breezers. They ain't hockey pants, they're breezers, just look at them. Anyway, he lost sight of the puck and decided to slide all the way into the net while the puck was just chilling on his ass. The Sabres were celebrating right away and Smith tried to scoot out of the net little by little because he had no idea where the puck was. What a way to lose in overtime. You can see the puck laying on the top of his pants on his jersey in the net. But hold on tight because Smith is coming back again. And this time it's because of his terrible diving skills. Name a more dynamic duo than Mike Smith and diving because we can just wait all day for your answer. You can say Billy Smith all you want, but Mike Smith went all out with his dives. Just look at these examples we are showing. He's lucky he didn't hurt himself in the process of drawing a penalty. Come on though. Are you a real team player if you aren't even having a yard sale when you get hit? Now that he ain't playing anymore, who do you think is going to take over the excessive flopper of a goaltender? Not letting up on their aggressive oh. forecheck, and there's a collision with Smith. I don't think we have enough goalie clips, so here's another one. 
When you're injury prone, the last thing you should be doing is engaging in a brawl at center ice. I hope if I mention the Penguins vs Islanders fight night, you immediately think back to 2011 when the third period got way out of hand. Fans were treated to line brawls and even a goalie fight. Well, not really a goalie fight because Di Pietro was knocked down by Johnson after one punch to the face. The punch fractured a bone in Di Pietro's face, and just like several times before, Di Pietro was sidelined for weeks while he healed. Boom, oh. right on the chin. And I promise you, this is gonna be the last goalie clip for the video. One of the first things you're taught in hockey when you get to the age when you finally have a goaltender on your team is that you protect him at all costs. No one goes anywhere near your goalie, no one snows him, no one takes a whack at him, and you sure as heck don't let anyone hit them. But the Sabres must have somehow missed that memo because of their lackluster response to their goalie getting hit. Lucci got away with absolutely smoking Miller and all the Sabres did was give him a few shoves. It doesn't matter that the Sabres didn't have tough guys on the ice, you still had to do something to stick up for your Tandy. Miller showed more intensity in the post-game interview when he was asked about what he thought of the hit. Just like I promised, we're moving on from goalies and we're gonna address the meltdowns over empty net goals from this season. Hockey has a rule book that officials enforce on the ice, but there's also unwritten rules that players enforce and there's a lot of them. You don't have to follow them, you just have to be ready for someone to take liberty. This season has been blessed with a few instances where an empty net goal has elicited some funny responses, starting with the Senators' Riley Griggs empty net goal. With a few seconds of the game remaining, he takes a slap shot into the empty net and it upsets Morgan Riley so much that he goes up to give him a cross check, right to the face. All hell broke loose as the players came flying to find a dance partner. Maybe Greek should have been ready for a response like that, but it's funny to see how upset Riley was. The play here is Greg gets the block. The game's over, you know, the time is ticking away, you don't need that. Happened approximately two months later. But this time, the Senators are the ones on the receiving end. This unwritten rule is so well known that it's even written in NHL 24. And kind of think of it, I think it's been in EA Sports games for the past 20 years. Anyways, he sure lazily puts the puck into the net well after the horn blows, signaling the end of the game, and guess what? That upsets Brady Kachuk. Kachuk makes a beeline for Heischer, and you can see him saying, what the fuck is that? Again, players come together to find a dance partner, and nothing else happens. It's pretty ironic how the Senators are in both clips within the same season. Nothing like the hockey gods blessing us with some content to cause wars in the comments section between the fans, Anyways, this last clip happened a few weeks ago after the Heisha clip, so within three months, we have three different clips all about the same thing. Jake Gensel scoring the empty netter to put the icing on the cake for the Hurricanes' amazing comeback in Game 2. Ruffled the feathers of Brock Nelson and Kyle Palmieri. Nelson whacked him twice on his way to the net and then once after the goal was scored, followed by a shove. Palmieri comes in to grab Gensel, but Ajo says no way man and tackles him to the ground. Except this is hockey, it ain't no football field, it's on the ice brother. Nelson with the slash, Gensel right in front of him. Well there you have it, 15 embarrassing on ice moments. Leave a comment about which clip was the most embarrassing and make sure to tell us which ones we missed for the next video. Make sure you subscribe or you may be the next person to fall victim to the pollen curse. And if you thought this video was pretty fun, make sure to click the video on the screen to watch the funniest mic'd up goalie moments. And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow. And see you next time. I'm sorry.